When you think of spies, you can't help but think of Hollywood. James Bond taking on a villain, fast car chases, and all kinds of gadgets. But during the Second World War, spies were quite different. They looked just like everyone else, but they were equipped with specialist skills for espionage, disruption, sabotage, and evading the enemy. Perhaps their greatest skill was their ability for concealment. They maintained their cover by blending in with those around them. One person who was well suited for the role of a spy was Nancy Wake. Her good looks, courage and confidence allowed her to evade suspicion, blend in with crowds and maintain her cover. Born in New Zealand, Nancy grew up in Sydney and was independent from the start. At 16, she moved away from home to study nursing and after receiving a small inheritance from an aunt, she pursued her dream of travelling to England via New York to become a journalist. As European correspondent for an American newspaper, Nancy witnessed the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi movement. While visiting Vienna and Austria, she reported seeing roving Nazi gangs randomly beating Jewish men and women on the streets. This, she said, appalled her and she vowed to do something about it. In 1939, she settled in the south of France after marrying wealthy French industrialist Henri Fiocca. In May 1940, after France's surrender to Germany, she found her calling using her newfound wealth and social standing to help members of the local resistance groups. The resistance had emerged in France as a way of fighting back against the German occupation. Ordinary French citizens were soon carrying out high-risk operations as they tried to disrupt German communications and transport and gather information for the Allies. From 1940 to 1943, she worked tirelessly for the resistance, undertaking a range of tasks, from couriering small packages to assisting the escape of Allied airmen and Jewish refugees from France into neutral Spain. On learning of her involvement with the resistance, Germany's secret state police, the Gestapo, put her on the most wanted list, but she slipped through their fingers so many times, Nancy was codenamed the White Mouse, a pest they found hard to remove. In fact, the Gestapo was so desperate to catch her, they offered a substantial reward for her capture. But time and time again, Nancy evaded them. She used her looks to her advantage. She said her attractiveness was her greatest weapon. She went under the radar, outfoxing the enemy at checkpoints, using fake identities. Nancy used her confidence and training to outwit the German soldiers. When she approached a checkpoint, she would sometimes flirt with the guards to distract them. Her flirting would work and she would be waved through. However, as the Gestapo closed in on her, Nancy knew she had to escape from France. Getting out proved difficult. It took six attempts to eventually escape to England. Nancy's husband remained in France. Tragically, Nancy never saw him again. Henri was later captured, tortured and executed by the Gestapo. Once in England, Nancy began training with British intelligence for a role with the Special Operations Executive, SOE, a top secret wartime covert operations organisation. Nancy was now being officially trained to become a spy. She trained in the arts of espionage and sabotage, learning crucial survival skills, weapon handling, hand-to-hand -hand combat, secret codes and how to work with explosives. She was one of only 39 women in the SOE and was regarded as one of the most capable resistance fighters in France during the Second World War. Nancy parachuted back into France in April 1944. Her job was to prepare and arm the resistance fighters called the Marquis for the upcoming Allied invasion of mainland Europe. Winston Churchill had instructed the spies of SOE to set Europe ablaze. Wake was involved in receiving parachute drops of weapons and ammunition, setting up wireless communications with England and recruiting and training members of the resistance. It was dangerous work, but Nancy was determined the enemy wouldn't win. One of her remarkable feats during this time was a dangerous bike ride to retrieve secret radio codes. In three days, she rode an incredible 400 kilometres on a bicycle across mountainous terrain, from Auvergne to Châteauroux and back again. Nancy said she volunteered for this mission as she thought, being a woman, she could get away with pretending she was a young housewife going home to her village. Throughout the ride, she had to pass by several German patrols and through numerous checkpoints. The guards had no idea how close they had come to nabbing the elusive white mouse. Nancy claimed this to be the proudest and bravest thing she'd ever done. In the lead up to the Allied landings in France in 1944, Wake and the resistance waged an intensive campaign of sabotage against the German occupation forces. She is even reported to have led a raid on the Gestapo headquarters at Bout le Con in central France, resulting in the death of 38 Germans. On the 6th of June 1944, D-Day, 
Allied forces gained a foothold in France, and two months later, Paris was liberated and freed from German occupation. Nancy Wake, the White Mouse, is one of the most decorated women of the Second World War. She received the George Medal, the 1939-45 Star, the France and Germany Star, the Defence Medal, the British War Medal, 1939-45, the French Officer of the Legion of Honour, the French Croix de Guerre with Star and Two Palms, the US Medal for Freedom with Palm, and the French Medal de la Résistance for her courageous endeavours. She received the Companion of the Order of Australia, the AC, in 2004. Nancy Wake lived the rest of her life between the UK and Australia. She died on the 7th of August 2011 in London, aged 98. Her story of service is that of a brave and committed individual who demonstrated extraordinary courage and resourcefulness in working with the French resistance. Nancy and her French compatriots played an important role in the end of German occupation of France and the end of the war in Europe. Nancy was once asked why she risked her life doing such a dangerous job, and she replied, Freedom is the only thing worth living for. I used to think while doing that work, it didn't matter if I died, because without freedom, there is no point in living.